Hey fellow heroes and welcome back to another endgame focus build for the Warlocks. Today we're going to be looking at the experience protocol Zotic with Solo 3.0 as it's been requested by a subscriber but also because there hasn't been much talk about the Zotic at all. Before subclass 3.0 the following Zotic was the best item to use in all content if you wanted a steady stream of supers and healing or demand. As of lately that hasn't been the case so I'm going to show you my findings and how the build around the Zotic with Solo 3.0 involved. So just a heads up it's still good, but it's not as good as it was before Void 3.0 arrived. But you know what else needs a little bit of help? This channel right here. So if you enjoyed the video, then I'd really appreciate a like, a sub, and for you to turn your notifications as it goes a long way for me. For the subclass, we'll be using Well of Radiance to fully complement the endgame build for Team and Solar Play. We have covered Phoenix Protocol many, many times in the past, and they tend to be the most popular ones out of the majority of World Exotics we have. Now, because of Solo 3.0, we have more room to experiment and use other perks to get more bang out of the exotic, as before, it was quite limited in what it could do. A prime example was the melee, which required you to be up close and personal to proc its effects. Now, in GMs, that's a big no, unless they are already weak. But now, we have the Cinematic Snap or Celestial Fire, both of which has good spacing to use. So, here's what I'm using for the setup so you can get a good idea as to what I'm doing. I have Touch of Flame that allows our grenades to have an added effect to them, and Heat Rises where you can hover in the air for longer and glide, and will grab melee energy back while in the air. For Fragment, you want Ember of Ashes, you can apply more scorch to targets. Ember of Torches where power mini hits against combatants make you and your allies radiant. Ember of Benevolence where granting healing to others will give you grenade, melee, and class ability regen. And Ember of Solace where radiant and restoration effects for us are increased. For stats, you want 60 to 100 resilience. 80 to 100 recovery, 18 discipline, and 50 in intellect. We won't be using wells heavily in the build like we do for others, but we will be using them to enhance some key stats further, such as from the wisdom for intellect. This means you can get away with having low stats as long as you have the right middle ground available. So for key mods, we have Well of Ordnance, where picking up elemental wells will grant additional grenade energy, elemental ordnance for creating wells via grenades. Font of Wisdom for a plus 15 intellect regen, Bow for Well for plus 2 mods created, and Classy Restoration for increased health regen for a few seconds. Very similar to how the Stag Exotic build we just did, you're going to see some similarities between the two and how they both work. Both sides focus on getting your super up quickly, but the Stag is focused more on having constant damage resistance available, while the Phoenix is all about chaining one super to another. The great thing about the two is that having both of these in the same team could allow you to retain a non-stop healing fort that heavily outheals any damage struck your way. The common build is more better at staying back and supporting others while getting your stuff ready, while the stack is more for aggressive players in terms of its exotics identity. Either way you look at it, the common build is great for support and that should be a big plus to anyone's playbook. So from here, you then want to invest into weaponry which will be suitable for the content you're in. And this is freely down to you, since grandmasters and end games can vary with weapons. My primary is the Bad Juju Exotic, as it's a lot more better than you think. Before Witch Queen, Bungie's Twelve mentioned that Exotics will be getting a PvE buff against Rank and File, as they felt too weak. They basically upped their damage by an extra 40%, and the changes are noticeable. The Bad Juju was quite weak to use in Endgame because of its frame type, and the amount of damage it needed to do to get a string of curses ability going. Now with the buff, you should be able to take on a GM rank and fire combatant with less bullets needed, and this is great if you want to use your super non-stop. Remember, using the bad juju will grant you rampage, auto refill on kills, and more super back depending on the stacks you get. This is now a weapon I would recommend you pull out of your arsenal and now give a try. Next we have the pointed inquiry scout rifle with shoot to loot and adaptive munitions. Another weapon with AM that I recommend you try and farm. This weapon has great range, great damage, and is pretty effective with allowing you to switch weapon perks if you manage to get the needed parts to do so. Now, although a bit slow, that shouldn't be a big issue if you're taking your time and pacing your shots. Alternatively though, if you're not playing anything in game, then the Forbearance is a great weapon to have with its chain reaction perk and ability to grant health back as well. For Heavy, I have the Hazen Vengeance Rocket Launcher with tracking bounds and Vorpal. Although we aren't using anything specific to enhance its damage further, such as Bond of Might, it's still a great weapon to use when Solar Burn is active. Of course, anything else like linear fusions or machine guns is also good to use as well. Now alternatively, if you have the Palomaya Beam or the Hothead Rocket Launcher, 
that I would recommend you look out for the explosive light perk, which will increase your damage by the number of orbs of power you have. As this build will be creating loads of it, it only makes sense for us to go ahead and use this as an advantage. For the stats, we need to focus on having high recovery, resilience, and a decent level of discipline. Now, trying to achieve a 100 in all stats is kind of hard if you don't have the armor to do so, so don't feel like you need to get them straight away. Like I mentioned in my last video, we can still have success with the build, as long as you support it the right way. Recovery for example is at 80, and this will allow you to get your health back up quickly via rifts, but also via classy restoration, which will give you that brief room of invincibility while you get to cover. From here, you could also add on the World of Life mod, but as you can see, that might not be an option you need to go ahead and do. Although what we currently have shouldn't be an issue, I do also have the utility kickstart mod as well, which should be enough for you to get your wrist back easily and health as well. We then have discipline at 80, which to be fair might be a bit too high for some, but this is only because of how strong the touch of flame aspect is. Also, depending on the activity, I might end up using the healing grenades to both buff myself and our lives for longer, thanks to the benevolence fragment. If this is still too much, then you can always reduce it down and place some points into resilience or strength instead, just to balance some things out. And then lastly, you have intellect, which can be left at 50, as Font of Wisdom will be getting you that plus 50 within stat. And then of course you have the bad juju and connect siphons mod available, where both of them will be helping you out with getting your super up and ready. So leftover wise, we only have rocket launcher scavenger mod for more rocket reserves to worry about. Now here's a list breaking this all down. For Head, we have Resilience, Connect Siphon Times 2, Well of Ordnance Mod. Arm, we have Resilience and Elemental Ordnance Mod. Chest, we have Resilience, Arm of the Dying Sun, Concussive Damner, and Frontal Wisdom Mod. Leg, we have Discipline, Rocket Launcher Scavenger, and Battle for World Mod. Bond, we have Discipline, Utility Kickstart, and Classic Restoration Mod. So, looking at the pros and cons of such a build in the endgame, it's probably best to go over what we already know. Using the Bad Juju and Phoenix Protocol allows users to enhance the super regen rate we get and allows us to get our next super ready before our current super is out. Using our rifts or super as well will give us the classy buff which will outpace the incoming damage and make you invulnerable until that duration is gone. We then lastly have the abilities regen we can get by simply buffing our teams or even healing them thanks to the elemental wells and the fragments used. All in all, it sounds very feasible for a build designed around support and only support alone. Phoenix has always been a great result to use for wild users if you ever want to use your super more than once and not wait for that to happen. Before the subclass update, everyone would have at least one warlock with the exotic who would be actively placing them down in the toughest areas and soak up damage and super energy and then only to go ahead and repeat it all over again. Even now that is still the case as the exotic allows me to pull off the same effects that we used to do in the past. But with the add-on effects such as bad juju and from the wisdom giving us bigger benefit than before. And this is what makes the exotic unique, as everyone will flock to wells which will benefit you greatly, and the ability to have second or third well available on demand makes doing tough content a little bit more easier for the many. However, like all good things, there is a con to this, which is lack of overshield being available now. Before the update, every time we used the well we would get an overshield on top of the healing we had, which made us invincible at the time, and not need bubble. Since Witch Queen though, that's being reserved solely for titans and their bubbles used. This makes things slightly awkward now as using wells will still make you invulnerable to some attacks, but too many heavy hitting attacks can still get you killed even when you have the well up. This means that to make wells really effective in Grandmasters, you will need to have a bubble titan or a spare stasis user so you can make use of the stasis crystals for extra protection. This of course can be further tough if the boss you're facing is mobile in a large area, as a well or bubble can become near useless in their function. I personally believe that this doesn't weaken the build overall, but it will make doing certain content ever so slightly harder for the general masses. It still has a great appeal to use, and a player base who support it through and through, but that one change to the exotic does make using it in high-end content questionable for some, since Void offers more to the table. Now however you spin it, the build still has the mighty punch we're all used to, and I would still recommend you explore it just to see how well it fits with Sir 3.0. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny related stuff. Once again, thanks for stopping by, take care, and I'll see you all in the next one.